Greetings, and welcome to worship with us at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church, where all are welcome. During this time of great pandemic in our world, we come to worship together via Facebook, as well as our Sunday morning 10 a.m. drive-in worship at 60th and Sorensen Parkway. We will continue to worship together separately and safely until we can once again come together in the sanctuary. Until then, please do your part to slow this pandemic. Tuesday, November 17th, we will be serving our Thanksgiving community dinner. Not the same as years past. This will be a pickup meal. You can take home and eat. The pickup starts at 5 p.m. in our parking lot. Uh, We're asking you to maintain a safe social distancing when you come and wear a mask. Again, all are invited. Next Sunday is the end of our church year, Christ the King Sunday. From there, we will go into the season of Advent, which is a time of preparation leading to the birthday of Jesus Christ. We will not have an in-person Thanksgiving Eve service this year. There will be a short message on Facebook that you could share with your family. And also in our November newsletter, there was a devotion that you could use. And if you would like one of our newsletters, just call the church office. Thank you. We would keep in our prayers all those on the front lines who are working to keep our hospitals running. We pray for the scientists and the doctors and the nurses. And we also keep in our prayers the parents, teachers, administrators, and students who are trying to keep our schools running safely. And we keep each other in prayer. We continue to lift up all those from our congregation who are home recovering, those who are mourning, those who are just plain struggling. We ask that you keep Ann Hoff and her family in prayer. Ann is at home in comfort care, surrounded by her family. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. So let us join in our call to worship. We are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love with all our heart and soul. We are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love with all our mind and strength. We are called to love the Lord our God. And we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves. Come, let us love our God and share God's love in this time of worship. We come together confessing our sins and receiving God's forgiveness. Love is patient. For our quick temperedness, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Love is kind. For our indifference towards others, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Love is not envious. For our petty jealousness, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Love is not boastful. For our pretentiousness, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Love is not arrogant. For our opinionated views, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Love is not rude. For our crass behavior, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Love does not insist on getting its own way. For our false sense of our own importance, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Love is not irritable. For our resentful behavior, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. For our rejoicing in all the wrong things, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May God show us mercy. Forgive us our sins against love and lead us to life that lasts. Amen. Persistently, patiently, lovingly, God pours out grace and joy into our lives, healing our brokenness, forgiving our sin. Loved, we are sent to love. Forgiven, we are freed to forgive. 
graced. We can offer our gifts to everyone we meet. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving, living God, be among us now. Show us your ways, guide our steps, live in us, that we may be people of steadfast hope and powerful giving. Help us hear your words, challenging us to give you all the things that are yours. Help us remember that we are and all we have are gifts from you, gifts to be shared in service and love. Holy One among us, help us to be a holy people who receive your word with joy and live your message with love. Amen. Well, God speaks to us in scriptures, in our preaching, and in song. Our Old Testament lesson today is from the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. Hear these words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read our New Testament lesson from 1 Corinthians 13 responsibly. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. Then we will see face to face. Now I only in part... Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. We continue our good news from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees or knows him. You will know the Spirit of Truth, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Well, Mark Twain once said this about the Bible. I have no problem with those parts of the Bible I don't understand. It's those parts of the Bible I do understand that give me fits. Well, the Bible talks a lot about love. It sounds easy enough, right? Don't we all love to love? Love God. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Not too bad. However, greater love has no one that they lay down their lives for their friends. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. What? Starting to sound a little more difficult. The word love occurs 510 times in the Bible. The Bible talks a lot about love. And there's different kinds of love. The New Testament was written in Greek, and Greek has five words for love. Philia means brotherly love, kind of like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Eros is a sexual love or an erotic type of love. Storge means family love. Philanthropo means human courtesy, kind of like philanthropy. And the last kind of love is the one that describes God's love for us. It describes an open, whole, self-giving love. It's called agape. And agape describes the very essence of God's nature. The book of 1 John says, Let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. I love that verse. In our gospel today, Jesus says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. The second is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. However, love is not merely an emotion. It's not just an exchange of heart-shaped valentines. It's an exercise of our will to build up the other, even at the expense of ourselves. You see, this love enables us to fulfill God's commands to us. The use of the Corinthians passage which is best known as the love passage or the love chapter, is used in many weddings. It's a perfect example of this confusion we have about love. For many people who are brought up in the church, or even those who have not been, as soon as they hear the words, love is patient, love is kind, you kind of start thinking of wedding bells and white lace dresses and rental tuxedos and unity candles and all that blah, blah, blah until you finally get to the reception. It's what we use to romanticize marriage. Too often this profound and wonderful passage is reduced to a platitude about how love is the greatest A main reason, however, that Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthian church is because the Corinthian church was a hot mess. The congregation was full of all kinds of drama and sinful behavior, and it threatened to ruin the very witness of the church to Jesus Christ. So that's the context that we must think of in this love passage is meant to stop them. It is meant to stop us from misbehaving. So Paul is using the Greek word agape, which means self-sacrificing love. And this kind of love is behind all the actions when we put others first. So this is the love with which God loves us. Because God What did he do? Sent his only son to die in order to restore our relationship with God, the creator. Paul tells the Corinthians three things about the love of God, which they are called to imitate. 
this kind of love is essential, it's effective, and it's eternal. We can practice this kind of love by periodically checking out our own intentions. It's easy to love everybody when it feels good to do so, when there's some kind of benefit we get for ourselves. But what about when loving someone doesn't feel so good? You see, the love of God is an action. It's not just an affectionate feeling. It's not just that warm, fuzzy feeling. It's sometimes messy and takes work. This is the love with which God created us and the love that causes God to sacrifice to save us. This is the kind of love that God commands us to practice all the days of our lives not just when it feels good to do so. See, this concept of love can be tainted when we become self-serving, self-focused, and self-fulfilling. And Jesus teaches us through the parables that God's love for us is agape. It's a love which gives itself for the benefit of others. This love is compassionate. It's self-expanding. It does not seek self-preservation. It seeks to serve others. So God's agape love is best seen in the life of Jesus Christ, who came as a child, uh, who came as an infant into this world completely, love in the flesh, and went on to die on the cross. God is love. But when we try to mirror God's love, we often choose one of those other kinds of love and we fail and we wonder why things go wrong. All we want to do is love others. God wants us to share with others because you see this love, this agape is action. This love doesn't cost the count or cost or benefits. This love gives for the good of others. This love is selfless. Love in action. Sounds like a little bit of work. And we're invited to experience this unconditional love from God through Jesus Christ. I want to share a little story I read. A farmer raised sheep, but next to him was one who raised wheat, children, and large dogs. The dogs were always scaring the sheep and sometimes even attacking the baby lambs. The sheep farmer didn't know what to do. He could shoot the dogs or poison them. He could become nasty to the neighbor, or he could take him to court. Instead, he prayed about it. And as soon as some new lambs were born, he gave one of the lambs to each of his neighbor's children as a pet. (laughs) You can imagine how thrilled they were. Well, the father could no longer allow the dogs to run free or they would kill and attack the lambs. So the dogs were tied up. The two farmers became friends. You see, kindness and love made them neighbors. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then we're commanded to love one another as Jesus loved us. So living in Christ means living each day for Jesus and our neighbor. I like my neighbors. That's not too bad. Living in Christ means living each day for Jesus and our neighbor, our white, our black, our brown, our female, our male, our bi-gender, transgender, single, married, Republican, Democrat, old, young, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist neighbor, and love myself. Seriously, how can I do all that? Why would I do all that? Well, I can't. So Jesus says, I will send you a helper. The spirit of truth will reside in you and you will love your neighbor 
with and through the power of the Holy Spirit as I love you. So here's the how and why of it. If you love me and you keep my commandments and you don't have to do it all alone. <laughs> wow. What a powerful scripture readings we have today. Remember Mark Twain saying in the beginning, I have no problem with those parts of the Bible I don't understand. It's the parts of the Bible I do that gives me fits. Folks, Christian life is tricky. Even when we think we might be sharing God's love, those other self-serving what-if loves kind of creep in. But agape love means I want to do something important to show love through action with no payoff, with no thought of how hard it might be, with no thought of considering how much it could cost me, with no thought of what I'm going to get out of this. Love God, love self, and love others as yourself shouldn't be that hard. Where is it? So what message do we take from this today? If you love me. So just how do we love Jesus? Loving Jesus is when we want to witness how we love Christ through our actions, how we treat other people. How do we love Jesus? We love Jesus with our heart and our soul and our strength and our mind. We love ourselves. After all, we're a gift from God. And we love our neighbor as ourself. And we teach this to our children, not by what we keep telling them, not by going just to Sunday school, not just by reading the Bible, not just by going to confirmation, not just what they hear us telling them. They learn this by seeing it. They learn that love is an action and they see it in how we show the world our love of Jesus. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So how does this apply to our church community? What does, if you love me, you will keep my commandments look like in our church community? How does Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Omaha, Nebraska show love for God, ourselves, and our neighbors? How are we keeping this commandment? Well, think about it a minute. And I know uh, we can all quickly come up with many ways we're showing our love to our neighbor. We support Project Hope, the food pantry. We support the community dinners. We keep others in prayer. We wear masks. We stay distanced to keep ourselves and our neighbors safe from COVID-19. We continue to worship in new ways so that we can continue to share our love for Jesus Christ, even if it's not the way we'd like to gather. We see it in the way we talk about others. So I challenge you as members of this church community to continue to be the ones who obey the commandment, if you love me. Do we do it alone? No. The Spirit abides within us and guides us what to do and what we are called to do. You know, when we try to explain how the Holy Spirit leads us day by day, do you really understand it? Do most people understand it? Jesus said the world can't accept this because they don't know the Spirit. They don't see the Spirit. But you know what they can see? They can see how you and I treat other people when no one else is looking. When you have nothing to gain personally by what you're doing, the world can see and know the Spirit working within us. They can see we're serious about putting a stop to this virus by being diligent in keeping others and ourselves safe. They can see when we're generous, loving, caring, helpful, and, and kind in our outreach to the community and to each other. 
I have heard it again and again. You may be the only sermon some people will ever hear. So what are they hearing? What are they seeing? Are they seeing and hearing this love of Jesus Christ? This is what I want you and I need you to remember. We are a sermon. And some people will only hear that sermon from you. So what are you going to preach? What are you going to show? This love, agape, is unique. And it's rewarding. And it's necessary. There's an old story that tells of a rabbi who lived in a small Jewish village in Russia. Every Friday, this rabbi would vanish for several hours. The devoted villagers would boast that during these hours, the rabbi ascends up into heaven to talk with God. Well, a newcomer moves to town and he's rather skeptical. This ascending into heaven didn't make sense to him. So this newcomer is determined to discover what that rabbi really is up to every week. So one Friday morning, the newcomer hides near the rabbi's house and watches him rise. The rabbi says his prayers and puts on clothes of a peasant. He then grabs an axe and goes deep into the forest and he chops down a tree and gathers together a large bundle of wood. Well, next the rabbi goes to a shack in the poorest section of the village. It's a very humble dwelling of an old woman and her very sick son. The rabbi leaves the wood, which is enough for the week, and then quietly returns to his own house. The story concludes when the newcomer decides to stay on in the village and he becomes a disciple of the rabbi. And whenever they would hear one of their fellow villagers say, on Friday morning, our rabbi ascends all the way to heaven, the newcomer quietly adds, yes, he ascends to heaven, if not higher. You see, love is a command. It's an action. It's a reflection of God. This love, agape love, is self-surrender and it fills our lives with joy and meaning. It's better than any Valentine you can ever get. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, not so that God will love you, but because God loves you. So we can truly love one another. Amen. As people of God, we join in prayer for one another. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we praise you that in life and death, you are our God and you love us. We thank you, God, for the gift of this day and with all its promise for joy and meaning and purpose. We thank you that you stoop to comfort us in our distress, to soothe our aching hearts, to love us. Hear these laments that haunt our souls. We pray for our friends and family who suffer from disease or injury, for those in the hospital and those recovering. We pray for the hospital workers who are coming up against more than they can seem to handle. Lord, we often speak in painful words about relationships that have gone bad and we grieve the state of this world, regions still ravaged by violence and poverty and political corruption and natural disasters in this pandemic. We seek your peace and healing and wholeness we ask for your spirit to guide us to love ourselves, to love our neighbors. And we admit our own actions, our inactions, and all the evils that plague this world. We also give you thanks for the gift of life and the joy of new life. We thank you for babies and children, for students and educators, 
We thank you for loving and faithful parents. And we thank you for the gift of maturity and our ability to grow in grace and love towards you and one another. Lord, give strength to those bearing heavy burdens, those who deal with afflictions, mental illness, loneliness, loss of homes or jobs or loved ones. Through all the ages, you have shown your faithfulness to us. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit this day and the week to come and through all of eternity that we may celebrate your grace so freely given so that we too can go out and love as you do. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we lift this up to you as we pray the words of our hearts, spoken and unspoken. In the name of your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus. So you're invited now to join us in this Holy Supper. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is, is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. It was on that night in which Jesus was to be betrayed. He gathered with friends around table. He took bread. After he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. In collective longing for the taste of your kingdom, we pray together the words your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. We will now share together with Christ among us the gifts of grace given to us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Friends, this is the body of Jesus Christ broken for you.
friends. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now be the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and give you his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give thanks that you have set before us this feast from the body and blood of your Son. By your loving Spirit, strengthen us to love you, love ourselves, and love our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are commissioned and sent into the world as a sermon of love to all those we meet. Hear this. The Lord our God is the one and only Lord. Therefore, go out into the world and love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love others as you love yourself. And may God give you justice and freedom. May Jesus Christ set you free to love. And may the Holy Spirit go where you go and protect you on the way. We go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Try.